now we'll, we'll go back again. Um, Barry Gordy, you were you. Um, I ask your opinion of Barry. <clears throat> uh, let me tell you something. There's a, there's a lot of things in your lifetime, you know, and a lot of people in you that you might meet in your lifetime. And sometimes you make a, you can connect with them, and sometimes they're just fleeting. And you know, something you say, "I'm glad I get a chance to see that person." When you get to know Barry Gordy, you know that his dream was the same dream that a lot of those folks were having, you know, that made music, you know, and use music as a tool to be able to make people make their day. And I look at Barry Gordy like what he is, a one of a kind. I had an opportunity to be a part of that. And when I did, I saw my mom smile, you know, because she had a lot of respect for Motown and their music and, it, 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 that, that was my everything then. Mr. Gordy, <clears throat> my opinion of him, class guy, class guy. I mean, you know, he, he's human, but he's a very classy guy. Smokey Robinson, same Thoughts. thing. Class guy. Smokey Robinson, I mean, he is, uh, I used to call Richard Street the quintessential lead singer, you know, and if I had to, <laughs> If I had to have a, 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 a tag or something going on about that, I think Smokey would probably be uh, up there real close. Smokey has his own style. Richard Street did. I mean, when he sang with the Peps, he was Ronnie Isaac. Wow. And when he sang with the Distance and the Temptations, he was someone else. You know Ronnie? Have you ever met Ronnie Isaac? Of course I have. Worked with him many times. All right. <laughs> many so did, times. did you get a chance to see... Um, that versus thing with uh, the Heisley yeah, Brothers and Earth Wind Fire, and it, to give you some appreciation. So you know, there's a whole generation younger that have never been exposed to people singing the kind of music like you guys yeah, sang yeah. or the Earth Wind and Fire right. sang that the Heisley Brothers. So like those guys like were the most trended things because like all these young people are like, oh my God, these people can people don't sing like that no more. No, they don't. no. no they but they don't you see, sing. look how long. When I got when I started singing, the first thing that people would tell me when I was telling them that that was what my was choosing for my career, they would say, well, "That's just a five year job." <laughs> that was what sixty years ago. <laughs> sixty years ago, I'm still rolling. I'm, I'm I'm fixing to go out here sometime this week, and I'm working on some new stuff. You just wow. got back last I, week from London. Yeah, I just did a thing in Europe, and. Uh, uh, and talking to some folks about going back with the Undisputed Truth. So, you know, I did that thing over there as a commemoration to the peps. You know, that was always my, the, the I, I, it's hard when people would ask folks, what's your, what's your most important or what was the best? Or, I'm learning to, to, to know that it is all a whole mix. You know, I knew your dad. You know, and I, every time I, when I seen you, I used to see you when we first met. Yeah. And I used to think of your dad. And one day I was happening to be over Butch's house and who show up in the car, I'm like, what? <laughs> and I said, yeah, he all around. Like, but I mean, the same guy never changed, mm -hmm. you know, and always a good guy. Oh, yeah. You know, so, you know, I know good people. I love good people. But you never know who they are until you have to reflect back and say, you know, people, you sit around and hear people talk about folks and they have their own opinion. Well, you know, and I always say, well, you didn't know them like I knew them. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's, you know, and that's, and that's the matter of fact. You know, you know, as far as talking about your daddy, Courtney, <laughs> me and him, you understand, been dibbling down, you understand, 50 years, you know. He had, he was more common. Yes, that's the reason why he didn't even ever hang with me and Eddie. Because me and Eddie was <laughs> all the way wild doing some stupid shit. Here you go. And he was gone. And like I say, you understand, there's a lot of things that uh, was happening with your daddy that really, you understand, helped us go. Anytime that we had a problem with you in New York, he would try to see your daddy up there. You know, I remember playing his day. He told your daddy, he said, man, 
Eddie, I'm not going up there fucking with them people. He said, he said goes, you and Butch are going to fuck around and get yeah, all of us. Everybody wacked you know out. <laughs> but you understand, I always did what I had to do. But your daddy always been a stand-up guy, you understand. He always Straight was at up. home and this and that and another. And, uh, but like I say, man, we had a hell of a crew. As far as many guys that was close to us, like I say, but a few left. Ruth, Charles Rudolph, I ain't got to tell you his story because he made a documentary. He grew up, he was a life Saw, long Saw Rudolph, yeah, um, right. Two weeks ago. Yeah, talk yeah. To him. I talked to, to him, him back home. And like I say, just then, Jap, he told his story. He was one of, the, one of the ones from the beginning. It ain't me. And there was another one, QT. I just ran into him. You understand? Not too long ago. Somebody should, from the clique just passed, so we should get some condolences. Zach. Yeah, and condolences to the Garrett family. Uh, right. Rest in peace. Um, Zach Garrett, brother Zach. of Ronald Five, old Garrett, and, and the whole Garrett family definitely go back with you guys. Right, right. But as their kids would say, a day oneer. Oh, yeah. There oh, yeah. from day one when it, when it all began. All started. He right. was also on the cover of that Feds magazine, actually, that shot that was taken at the 20 grand. Uh, right. With uh, Eddie and. Um, Zach. Zach. Oh, was Duck Trice, Trice too. Did yeah, huh? Duck Trice. Yeah, he died too yesterday exactly. a few months ago. Duck Trice, you understand? But like yeah. I say, it's, you know, it's just that little area from Mac down to, just say down to Madison. It was so many guys getting money. The Godfather, Ron uh, Seacrest, uh, 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 I can't think of all men right now. I had to, I got to roll down and stuff. You my age. You know yeah. Saying? Big Boss Filmworks and Big Boss Books presents Courtney Robert Brown Jr.'s follow-up to the book Motown Mafia. Motown Mafia, big man on campus. My internship was kind of in how the world of international finance and international criminal activities overlap. Corey Black Sr. wanted Corey to go to school to bring legitimacy to the family. But Corey had other plans. While in college, with the help of his friends, and his girlfriend, he starts and grows a successful drug operation. Five minutes later, two agents, well now, I, well now I know they were agents, but at the time I see two guys go to the right, another two guys start walking towards me. They stop at my seat and they go, grab your bags, DEA, come with us. Needless to say, uh, this is not the fun part of being an intern. Corey finds himself conflicted with his responsibility to running the family business and his obligation to his college studies. However, he'll have to make things work in his favor if he wants to remain the big man on campus. The names have been changed to protect the guilty and the innocent. I'm taking economics and business 101 and marketing and you know your economic teachers telling you about a business plan and how you get a small business loan and you know it's, it's kind of the hypocrisy of the world because I'm like that ain't how the real world works.